Hi, I am coming at you from the 515 train to Haverhill. It is 525 and the train has not left yet. Once again, it is clearly overcrowded. Um, they frequently in the morning uh, on the train that I take give us too few cars so that people have to stand the entire way. Take a look at this aisle. Yeah, completely packed. The conductor, my friend 4240, has also just announced that they will not be moving the train if anyone is riding the vestibule. And short of short of standing on top of each other, I'm really not sure how that's going to happen. So, once again, the MBTA and Keolis doing fine work together. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Bye-bye. Hey, video update number two from the train. So... They're experiencing mechanical issues. It is mm, coming up at 5.30. There's another train to Haverhill that leaves at 5.35. So I'm wondering if they're either gonna ask us to get on that one or if they're just gonna try to jam more people onto this one. It seems like they're starting to be a mass exodus. Um, another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Farewell. Video update number three. So they had us walk from track 10 over to, well, actually they didn't have us walk. They told us that the train had mechanical failure um, and that we were, um, and that the 535 is probably gonna leave before us. So like half the people came onto the 535, which is actually an even shorter train. Uh, which is kind of exciting. So now we're definitely going to be late picking up my daughter, and we don't have anybody who can um, pick her up for us. So that's kind of exciting. The train is now, this train, the 535, is so crowded. People are shoved into the vestibule in a way that I don't think I've ever seen before. So, yep. It's exciting. See that? Hi, John. This is Greg, always dad. So Keyless is enforcing the no vestibule rule pretty strictly. Greg and I shoved some shoved our backpacks up on the luggage rack, uh, which created like space for maybe half a person. I don't know. Um, I'm ba practically sitting on this poor woman's lap, and take a look at how crowded we are now. I don't think this is legal. We're safe. <laughs> Yep, we're going to be really late picking up our daughter. Oh well. Day 17 on the Haverhill line. Um, so it is now going on 5.50. Um, if you recall correctly, that, as you may recall, we were trying to get on the 515. We're now on the 535, which just pulled out of North Station and has stopped and they have turned off everything, <laughs> including the air conditioning, so I should probably stop talking and creating hot air. Day 370 on the Haverhill line, um, the conductor was just overheard saying that they are not gonna be able to take anyone on at Malden and the AC is off and the car is so crowded he didn't actually know it was possible for this to be this crowded and yeah it's pretty pretty crowded it'd be nice if they got the ac fixed in this close to 90 degree day so good morning from the um 652 out of lawrence I just wanted to make a summary video to let you know how yesterday's nightmare ended. So I left work at 4.13 to catch the 5.15 train out of North Station. Um, we arrived in Lawrence, uh, I actually am not sure what time, but we picked up our daughter at 7 o'clock and we arrived home at 7.15, so it took me three hours to get home and they just increased the fares. And you know, the sad thing is that, like, while the whole experience together was a total nightmare, um, each individual piece of it 
is not that uncommon. So we couldn't even feel that surprised when all the pieces came together. Um, so my husband and I each pay for his own six pass, which is $340 a month per person. Uh, our child care costs $300 a week. Um, thankfully, we're subsidized by our employers, so our employers pay half, but we're still paying $340 a month for this service, um, which is over a week of child care for us. But the time that we're losing with these delays and these mechanical failures, like if you looked at our hourly rate, it's just crazy. <laughs> um, I don't know what we're going to do. We can't afford to live in Boston, but it's starting to look like we can't even afford to live in the Merrimack Valley, which is one of the few um, affordable places left to live in the area. Uh, we make a good wage. We have debt. Um, we both work full time. I'm about to finish my master's degree. My husband has a master's degree. Um, yeah, we, we both work in Cambridge. We have one child. We don't live extravagantly. So we live in a place that we can afford and we have to put up with this so-called public service. And <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm just grateful to everybody who watched uh, and who's willing to hear this little part of our story. Governor Baker, get it, get it together. <laughs> um I don't really know what else to say. Uh, it seems like our train is on time today. We have a shorter train than we should. Again, um, the train here at Ballardvale just had to back up because they give us they give us a shorter train than usual. So we had to stop the train, back up, pick up the disabled person on the platform, and then pull forward to the place where they have to stop to let people onto the train. So we've lost some time. I actually really, um, sorry, I just dropped my phone. I like our conductor. I don't think that he is trying to make our lives miserable, but this is like, this is every day. I hope you have a great Wednesday. <laughs>